And there is, uh, it was Todd, whatever, from a week, few weeks ago we had a match. He is a little person. He's, okay, picture this, right? Jeff Jarrett outweighs you by 100 pounds. He binds your wrists. He gags you, throws you in a body bag, carries you down to the ring. And when he releases you, he says, I'm going to cripple a midget live on pay-per-view. Wouldn't you be a little scared? A little worried? A little concerned? This dude was bored out of his skull. Well, he was little. He didn't care. Guess, do what you're going to do. Cash me my check. I don't care. And so Jared kills him. And he pile drives him and does whatever. Does Gives him the mini stroke. Ha, ha, ha. He demands more competition, perhaps old women or farm animals. I'm not making that up. Out comes Puppet the Psycho Dwarf. Jared says, I'm much bigger than you too. This is not a problem. And so Puppet the Psycho Dwarf pulls out a handgun. You know, I couldn't help but uh, notice watching this segment that uh, a couple of weeks ago there was a segment where this guy was in a trash can yeah. and uh, and he was allegedly pleasuring himself as he was being interviewed. Yes, correct. And uh, people have been talking about this fucking trash can segment for 21 years and we went back and we watched it and our conclusion was, that's it. That's the segment that everyone's been talking about for 21 years. Well, now, now... You're telling me that this guy in the trash can has been remembered and talked about for 21 years, but nobody remembers when he pulled a fucking gun on Jeff Jarrett? He pulled a gun on him. In the well, ring. He, this he is a Brian Pillman at his, at his house. They're in the middle he of the ring, out, in the middle of like, the fairgrounds. He pulled out a fucking gun, and he is going to shoot... Shoot Jeff Jarrett. Well, the week before he was pulling out his gun. He was Why? To shoot you know, it. I actually have a theory. I have a theory, and that is that everyone's already quit. Yes, I and believe. And thus, nobody remembers. <laughs> yeah, at the moment, the guy with the gun, the, the, because nobody at this point was watching. A they large were down section, three hundred viewers. A large section of the fan base turned it off at the trash can and never came back. Because this stuff is. Always... I don't think it was a trash can. I think it was the show sucked. Well, and they they decided why the fuck would I ever buy the show? Which, by the way, you know somebody's been posting excerpts from uh, Jerry Jarrett's book on the board every week, and uh, last week's show he was talking about how you know we just got word that we're not doing all that many buys. <laughs> okay, now I understand. That uh, I think the guy's name was Jay Hassman. I understand that he was giving them numbers which were inaccurate and everything like that. But it's funny if you go back and you read the newsletters, particularly my newsletter at the time. Like, I saw these numbers and I was like, there ain't no fucking way they're doing this many buys. There's no way. Who the fuck is, but there's, it's impossible. But they just kept saying, oh man, lots of buys, lots of buys. Well, it turns out, in fact, Nobody was buying these fucking shows, and uh, it's not much of a surprise as we watch this episode right here, where a guy pulled a fucking gun, and to this day, nobody even remembers it happened. So Puppet pulls out the gun. Jeff Jarrett flees the ring. Security all runs out, and this kind of, they do the thing where they get in the ring, go like, oh, 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 oh. But no one like uh, confronts the the little person with the gun until brave, fearless Jeff Jarrett returns, and he drops the little man with the gun with a chair shot to the back of the head. The segment continues. Jarrett is now beating up the little person with the chair. Security just leaves. They just all get out of the ring en masse as Jarrett beats up the little person and then beats up Felix. Why is he just getting hit with a chair? What's going on? So out comes Ricky Steamboat and Bullet Bob and a Harris twin. <laughs> Steamboat tells Jeff they can do this the easy way or the hard way. Jar says, I tell you what. Send your boys to the back. You and me go one-on-one. -on -one. If I win, I get a title shot. If you win, I'll go back on suspension. Even though Steamboat just lifted the suspension. Now he's, I don't know, whatever, fuck, whatever. The crowd cheers Jarrett making this challenge. Willing to go to a one-on-one -on -one fight to get what he wants. Because he's the fucking top babyface, even though he's the top heel. So Steamboat agrees, but it's a trap, and Scott Hall jumps Jeff Jarrett from behind, and eventually Jarrett runs away. All right, this thing went like 15 minutes. In the end, let's recap everything <laughs> Jeff Jarrett did and what oh happened God. to him. He tortured a helpless little person. 
He saved the fairgrounds from a potential mass shooting. He challenged the authority figure to a fair fight. He was then jumped from behind by a cowardly attack. All in one segment. Yeah. yeah. This, this segment started with a match. As, as the top heel yes. in the company. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Goldilocks stunning. interviews. Stunning. <sighs> stunning incompetence. And we've just got started. <laughs> this is the show. We're not even a half hour in, I don't think. Goldilocks interviews Sonny Siaki for more talking. Oh, my God. Allow me. Because the, the details do not matter. <laughs> she interviews Sonny Siaki. Sonny Siaki, for weeks, has been a heel. He has been burying the other flying Elvises. He has been saying he taught them everything they know. He has stated that they suck. He does this promo talking about how hot he is, how Goldilocks is not allowed to look at his ass, how he is the uh, whatever. He sent the other Elvises home. He's here to show them how it's done. He cuts a total heel promo. He goes down to the ring for his match, and out comes his opponent, Slash. James Mitchell's Slash, who is a heel. Oh, yeah. Slash then proceeds to get the heat on heel Sonny Siaki. Yeah. Heel Sonny Siaki is to, to be the babyface in peril. The crowd is fucking dead because they don't know what the fuck is going on. This heel Sonny Siaki makes a babyface comeback, which leads to him being pinned. You gotta have an IQ in the 40s to write this fucking show, dude. Like, I was I was like, what the fuck is going on? Why is he a babyface? Why did he just cut a heel promo to come out and play babyface? What? <sighs> Am I missing anything? No, no, you, you, you are not. You did a fine job. I think you said it's exactly right. In the, in the big picture, that's what, that's what happened. I can add details. because There's a lot to make fun of here. But in the big picture, that's exactly what happened. All right. So... About the promo, uh, it was definitely a heel promo, but uh, just as importantly, it, we have now hit the phase where they're just telling him, go do the rock. Mm -hmm. Do a rock impression. You refer to yourself as a third person every single time. Uh, insult your interviewer. D just be a, a poor man's imitation of a ripoff of the rock. So he's doing that. And he decides to go out and do this match by himself. It is Slash versus Sonny Siaki. We had 15 full minutes of garbage in between these matches. And then we got this match. So they're doing the match. It's two heels. Nobody gives a flying fuck. The highlight is Jim Mitchell on commentary, who has an item with him. It's a little <laughs> gold box. He describes it as the Ark of the New Church. He says, inside the Ark of the New Church, I can have the blood of the Audad. Mm -hmm. And Mike Tanay says, the blood of the Audad. And Jim Mitchell says, yes, it's the blood of the Audad. And they argue about what an odd ad is. And uh, Ed says, actually, he actually says, I'll look that up on Google.com. <laughs> Which, for the record, I did. It's a, a, a real animal, a wild, chiefly brown bovine related to goats and sheep, also known as a Barbary sheep. Now, I thought that's what my son said every time I would tell one of my jokes. Ah, oh, Dad. It's so much funnier than that you explained it. Yeah. Yeah. So, nobody cares about this match. To, to, to reinforce how much they're both heels, they go to the top rope. And both guys get crotched. <laughs> As my notes here read, he makes his comeback, misses a thing, Slash puts a bag on his head, pins him with a neckbreaker in 740 of boredom. Okay, he put a bag, bag on his head. Does it have chloroform in it? What? I don't know. <laughs> no, you can't see when you're taking the bump so it hurts more. I think that's the uh, theory. <laughs> that right? It's that like right? when you get rear-ended in a car wreck. So Jim Mitchell... I've been talking about the blood of the ad odd after the entire match. He gets in the ring and holds up the arc and says, Here I have the blood of the odd ad. <laughs> and he starts to, he says, I'm going to desecrate you. And he starts to smear the blood all over uh, Sonny Zaki's face. And Mike Tanay, the professor, who's supposed to be the smart guy who knows everything, says, Is that blood? 
So a Harris hits the ring. The announcers aren't even sure which one it is. Apparently, it's Heavy D. Actually, they uh, they they said multiple names for the one Harris. <laughs> I don't think anybody knew which guy it was. No, so uh, Could have been both. So Slash wins the match, but then Ron or Ron and or Don Harris wasn't one of them. Ron or Don Harris beats him up to ensure nobody gets over. And then Malice comes out, has a stare down with Heavy D because they are big. Let's put a pin in that one. We'll get back to that shortly. And Granny, did you know that in the room right now is an Emmy Award winner? I know. I want to congratulate wow. you, Wow. Thank you. The only one here who's ever achieved anything of value. Nice work, Shane. Way to go, buddy. <laughs> Let's see this big gold Emmy. Wow, look oh, at that, everybody. Wow. Holy smokes. That qualifies. That's Prefer to hold it by thing. the bottom to it as well. Let's get a picture for the front page. Yeah, like you want it. <laughs> <laughs> Granny, they say that Washington is a hot spot for UFOs. Is there any connection between aliens and Bigfoot? The animals are aliens. What? So you're telling me that my cat is from another planet? Yes. Due to Brian's birthday, Brian versus Jungle Boy. Jungle Boy looked a foot taller than Brian. <laughs> he's not a foot taller than me. God. He's not the big poopy hair. He's, he's maybe. What is that noise? This was sure. with you and Vinny against uh, Chris Drysack and Ideal Mexican. 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 Yeah. Yes. Brian pulled uh, Chris's panties down in the back. Yeah. His, his panties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he saw his rice sack. S A J W N G A double R E T T. S A J W N G A double R E T T. His name is Sean Garrett. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.